Australian manufacturing has been going through some tough times recently and some big brands are currently in the process of moving their production offshore. Yet behind me are two of Australia's biggest selling heavy duty trucks and they're both still made right here in Oz. First cab off the rank is the Volvo F8. This is the latest incarnation of Volvo's global heavy duty platform. It's powered by a 16 litre 600 horsepower engine and is backed by Volvo's iShift automated transmission. It's a silky smooth performer and it's really raised the bar in terms of driver comfort and noise levels. And this is the Kenworth K200. It's the biggest selling heavy duty truck in Australia and it's a uniquely Australian design. This one is powered by a 15 litre Cummins ISXE5 and is backed by an Eaton Ultrashift transmission. Now I can't drive both these trucks myself, so I've invited along arguably Australia's most experienced transport journalist, Steve Brooks. All right Woody, all we've got to decide now is who's going to drive which truck. Heads I drive the Kenworth, tails I drive the Volvo. How's that? Righty eh? We'll flip for it. All right, you flip. Don't forget to catch it. Looks like I'm in the Kenworth, you're in the Volvo. You be gentle with that thing, oh, won't yeah. you? All right, all the best. <laughs> Welcome to Hotel Volvo. It's smooth, it's stylish, and it's a bit compact. The uh, Kenworth Big Bunk is exactly that. It has everything you could possibly want, almost. We've got a sunroof, and that's a dis escape hatch as well. The big thing with this cab, is seriously, is just the physical amount of space that's in here. And there's lots of buttons. And when it comes to accommodation on the road, it'd be really hard pressed to beat this. Yeah, so this is my bed for the night and Brooksy's over there in the Kenworth with enough room for him and a troop of boxing midgets. The one thing about this truck that really stands out, it oozes Matt Wood. He has really let his head go. He has specified this as if it was his and you can all tell from the way it's laid out, Woody is a sook. I prefer to think of myself as the thinking woman's truck driver. So we're on the way north out of Maroolan and uh, I'm back in the woody wagon. I kind of feel like I have a bit of an investment in this truck because I actually spec'd it up. I chose the colour, all the bling on it, you know, the, every part of the build I was, I was there to tick the box and write what I wanted. So it's kind of a, a little bit cathartic to be uh, sitting here and actually steering it. So the Volvo is full of technology, but there's still a fair bit going on here. We've got um, like active cruise control up here that actually has a beam out the front. Let you know if there's something in there uh, in the beam. If you're not paying attention, it'll actually warn you. And if you still don't do anything, it'll actually start to brake for you. It's got a full stability control underneath and disc brakes. So it's um, it might look a little bit old school on the outside, but there's still a little bit of techno wizardry going on underneath. Yeah, it really is a, um, a huge clash of cultures. These two trucks. This is the Volvo, of course, but. It steers as good as any truck you would ever want to steer. The ride quality is just brilliant. 
you know, there used to be a story you could get seasick driving a Volvo, and that was pretty true, you know, they used to wobble around so much, but not these ones. I think if there's one area where the Kenworth and the Volvo compare, is the Kenworth has so much more space for the driver behind the seats, and this one is so limited. Volvo's put a lot more cubic area in front of the driver and above the driver, but seriously, that bunk, they really need to do something about it. They need to bring that XXL cab back and give the driver a bit more sleeping space. This is the perfect use for the Kenworth step. <laughs> what he meant to say was, Kenworth step has many attributes. <laughs> Being a table is one of them. When you're stuck out in the middle of somewhere with Woody, eating fish and chips, just what every trucking needs. No, uh, that's right. Yeah. How, how is your potato cake there, Woody? Not too bad, they call them scallops up here apparently. Ah. Here we are at Kaibaka, day three, and just heading north to Brisbane today. It's, what, 550 k's or thereabouts, and uh, yeah, if these trucks keep doing what they've been doing, we'll have another good day. We've travelled to Hume and the Pacific Highways and we've finally arrived in Brisbane. Really, driving the K200 is like listening to your favourite rock album on vinyl. It's full of character and soul. Driving the F8, it's got a polished digital feel like you're listening to the same album on your iPod. The K2's got the big bunk and that makes the F8's bunk feel pretty tiny. But interestingly, both trucks are like neck and neck as far as performance goes. I'm really curious to see how the fuel compares when we get back to Melbourne.